I'll just have some, I'll have you guys get with them. We've got some more reversals. So. And they're passing around a sheet right now. Okay, I have, if everyone has something to write with, or even on the back of that, that's fine. That's actually just some extra stuff to help you guys in for chapter 10. So the emails that she sent out, please pay attention to the assignments. We don't have a lot of time to cover what I'd like to cover with you guys. So these are the two assignments from me. So uh, find some song lyrics. Not to plagiarize the song, because you will write your own sonnet, and I am a companion. Now, I do realize that some of you will probably want to write more. If you feel that, go for it and write a Villanelle, which is a 19-line uh, meter. So, um, listen to the music, the rising rhythms, follow through with the falling uh, rhythms. There's a progression from the chords that you hear, or music, Pay attention and accept the metered flow of sound or rhythm. That is how you incorporate your sonnet to paper. Villanelle is okay, I said. Uh, please use your own words. You may refer to the outline of a poetic sonnet or Villanelle, which I've given you some examples on those pages, so that'll help you. Uh, and you'll perform it for Anya or from your desk, either or on Wednesday. Wait, you said, okay, write a poem? You'll just write, you're using your own words, you'll write a sonnet from your own words. Like, for example, um, if it's like, you know, writer, the type, I mean, they, things that you would like to write about using oh. your own words. Huh? Okay, alright. Um, the other assignment? It's a little easier, not so taxing. Uh, go to a movie or rent one. Okay, and listen for the rhythms from the dialogue in the script. A lot of times we don't pick up on it, but drama is actually used very, very much. Um, that return back and forth. Write half a page summary to a page over what terms are being used. Two pages is fine. It's due Wednesday. And please refer to your terms for review on page 181 to 182. Has everyone signed this? Yes. Did um, you sign it? Yeah, I signed it. After you said, uh, read the movie and listen to the dialogue and the script, uh, what was the next part? Uh, and listen to the dialogue and script for the rhythms that are turned back and forth. Write half a page summary to a page over what terms are being used. And please refer to your terms for review. I'll pass this around if you guys need to, if that will help. Okay. That's new Wednesday, you said? Yeah, Wednesday. Cool. It, it may seem like a lot or like tedious work, but I can promise you when you're through, you'll be proud of yourself. Like honestly, it's it's a lot of fun to actually just go through and explicate. <coughs> we, we call it explicating a poem. And we just kind of break down each line, verse for verse. And I mean, it's it's not bad. It actually goes pretty fast. So are these assignments from you or from her? From me. But I'm going to tell her, and also there's, see if she can give you guys extra credit. Because I, you know, I heard that from another class. So if that's important to you, especially right now, yeah. you know, yeah. inching closer and closer, then these will help, you know. Well-written thought, informed rhythm and meter and terms. That works. It's just a way of research paper that we do. Right. Okay. If you find a movie like, say, for example, a modern-day Romeo and Juliet or a latter-day Romeo and Juliet, if you have time to watch it, that's great. And you just have to write up a quick summary using the terms for review. So it, that way it won't interfere with the thought process in writing your paper. So it'll actually strengthen what's going on in the mind. So make you more aware. Because these, like what you're about, what you're going over, like from chapters nine to ten and so on and so forth, this is like the stronghold, the captivating points of literature. 
from poetry, we gain, um, especially if you are into romantic, not everybody has to be into a romantic period. The sonnet traditionally was a little song, that's where it comes from, and it was meant in a very uh, romanticized way. So and it, it doesn't have to, you have to understand the rhythms, the, the stress marks, the dactyl, the anapest, they're very important. So I actually wrote up something to make it, especially for rhythm, for dactyl, anapest, trochee, voice, voice is another thing that carries, is very, very important. It's what comes from your writing from within that goes onto a piece of paper. So that way when somebody reads it, they understand. Like, have you ever heard the term, even if you write well, hey, I think you plagiarized this, you know, can you tell me what this means? They understand when they read your voice. So from your papers that you turn in, it just recurs over and over. You want to make it a strong voice. That's what you get from poetry, like, well, I like this the way it sounds, or versus this rhythm. So this is what I wrote for you. It's titled Pan. Just listen. If you have any questions, just stop and ask me. The car has hit the street. Another night that jazz fills up my drink. So easily, light, neon light, wakes the infantry of desire in the ever, ever ending notes. Stationed outside to inside, my ears as a front door open to all types of audible usage, which syncopates a rhythm. Any questions? Now I'm going to read it again without having that rhythm or that meter or those stresses on them. So it might be a little bit easier. Because that's what, when you actually go back and do that, you think, God, I'm in grade school again, you know, because you're just breaking syllables up. And then you go from there. And you start counting and you listen. The car has hit the street. Another night that jazz fills up my drink. So easily light, neon light, wakes the infantry. Of desire in the ever, ever ending notes. Stationed outside to inside my ears as a front door. Open to all types of audible usage, which syncopates a rhythm. Can you kind of see a difference? Yeah, I, I kind of like the way the special is It's not as hard on your ears. It, it flows. That's the rhythm that you want to incorporate when you you have a style. Everyone has a style in your writing. I couldn't name what anyone's style in here is, but I'm pretty sure that it's, it's very interesting, you know? Because things you see, things you hear, things you feel. Poetry plays on our senses. If you can take with you the five senses and apply them to a poem, it'll be very well written. Okay. Now, something else, uh, simile and metaphor, very, very prominent. You have like or as. And metaphor, for us, is for the word for transfer. And our minds usually just work naturally in metaphor. I don't know if you guys ever had a boss that just speaks in metaphor. You know, you have to get something done, but how? You know, and how fast and how many minutes. Um, there are... I'll read, this will probably, there's a rhyming scheme in the plays that we've read. I don't know if anybody's been in drama or taken a theater class or anything of that nature. But I'm going to read Every Man, which is a play written by Anonymous. And what I want you to do is I want you to listen for the end rhymes, because most of these are stock end rhymes. Alack, shall we thus depart indeed? Lady, help without any more comfort. Lo, fellowship forsaketh me in my most need, for help in this world whither shall resort. Fellowship here before with me would merry make, and now little sorrow for me doth it take. It is said, in prosperity men friends may find, which in adversity be full unkind. Now whither for succor shall I flee, since that fellowship hath forsaken me? To my kinsmen I will truly, praying them to help me in my necessity. I believe that they will do so, for time will creep where it may not go. I will go say for yonder, I see them. Where be ye now, my friends and kinsmen?
Now, what I want to ask you guys is, this is probably the part where writing stands out to us the most, because we hear that strong voice accentuate meter, rhythm, meter, rhythm. Why do you think that is? Why do you think it would stand out more than just your basic song that has music behind it or things of that nature? Anyone? Change in tone, maybe? That's a good point. Anything else? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to put you out. Um, these are extras that will probably help you. I've got two assignments for myself. Do you, are you guys still passing it around? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. She'll pass it around. Um, so, I strongly urge. So, and um, we're just going over rhythm, meter, dactyl, antipas, and flaky. There you go. You can read that. Okay. Now, Here's some rhythm also from Edgar Allan Poe in The Raven. That's probably the strongest rhyming rhythmic that you'll pick up on, that we've heard countless years, over and over. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I mutter, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Can you hear that? Go back and forth, back and forth. And we do that even when we write basic sentences. Are you thinking? For example, we use, and, and it'll throw you off sometimes when you write them, probably after all of this, because we hear homonyms, the basic infrastructure of a homonym, read, read, well, I read, 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 and so back and forth, and we have to learn how to apply those in a simple sentence. It's very basic, basic. and there are run-ons that in poetry, they're more typically used in uh, free verse. So, if you're good at, at just kind of writing something in your head and it's free verse, it might just be harbor or run on. So write it down and then go like say it over, and you can see what you need to add or subtract or anything like that. Um, I did add lyrics on your sheets. One of them is Dazed and Confused, the Zeppelin, and many others. These, this goes from sonnet to villanelle because it's 19 lines. But every end line rhymes. So it's like every opposite line. The other ones that I can think of uh, that have a nice rhyming scheme to them, uh, Redbone, Come and Get Your Love, there's a part in there that's like, Baby, you're mine. You look so divine. And it, it just kind of goes one, two, three, every other one. But it always will end up maybe going back to line one, so on and so forth. Because there is a different, definite pattern as to how everything is written out, constructed. Um, another example is for your love. For your love, for your love, I would give the stars above from the birds. And that one has another rhyming scheme. That one's not on there, but I'm just throwing them out there. Because if you pick up on them, remember how it goes. And you take the rhythms and the beats, not the words. Use your own words to write that song in it or that little note. So. so far, do you guys have any questions?
basically, I'm just, I'm going to read you poems so that you get into that flow. I just want you to listen, and if you have any questions, just say, hey, Miss Lovery, I have some questions, or Anna. This one is a fixed form, and it's a sign. So just listen, so I can A, B, A, B, A, A, B, B, things of that nature. Lucifer and Starlight by George Meredith. On a starred night, Prince Lucifer uprose. Tired of his dark dominion, swung the fiend. Above the rolling ball and cloud, part screen, Where sinners hugged their specter of repose. Poor prey to his hot fit of pride were those. And now upon his western wing he leaned. Now his huge bulk o'er Afric sands cream. Now the black planet's shadow of arctic snows, soaring through wider zones that pricked his scars with memory of the old revolt from awe. He reached the middle height, and at the stars, where are the brain of heaven, he looked and sank. Around the ancient track marched, rank on rank, the army of an alterable law. Now, when I think of, of sonnets, of course, I think of Shakespeare, I think of Petrarch, who, he has very interesting, if you guys get a chance, look up some of his work and read a little bit of his background. It's very interesting how he came to write and become his voice well recognized and known. Sonnet 29, and this is from William Shakespeare. When in disgrace with fortune in men's eyes, I all alone do weep my outcast state, and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries, and look upon myself and curse my fate, wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope. With what I most enjoy contented least, yet in these thoughts myself almost despising, happily I think on thee. And then my state, like to the lark at break of day <coughs> arising, from sullen earth sings hymns at heaven's gate, for thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings, that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Now, a lot of his, his poetry, you hear that voice and you hear that rhythm. And this is a lyric that, it was a song written for a friend that I did. And the first lines, just listen, it's titled Jody. You left my side for my wife. Affections from you turned my nights sick, just how. You and she left me dead and blue. Jody, Jody, oh, I wanted to know, just how could you? Your line, gotta remember this one for sure. Brother, you're my best friend. Jody, Jody, oh, I wanted to know. Just how could you? As this story ends, I've loved you. She, well, always was no good. Not this time, just leftovers from a rusted out tackle box fishing line. Jody, Jody, oh, I wanted to know. Just how could you? You find a voice and you put it to paper and then you'll put chords and you'll put music to it. But I, I would guess that a lot of you have a voice with questions that you want to apply. So inter, uh, mixing lyric voice is very important. It actually catches the reader's attention. Just simple questions, simple sentence structures, things that rhyme, even if it's internal rhyme, sight rhyme, end rhyme, off rhyme, all very, very important issues. It is their structure, is what they are. Now, I will read you some sonnets that I wrote, that I rewrote. So, and most of these carry themes. So if you remember that as well, when writing your sonnet, that's also important. This one is just the theme of fixed form rhyming scheme, titled Traditional. The fingers and breeze of summer touch, twirl, and flirt around a wall, leaving an empty space to lumber, an echoed caress of a blade of grass, who bends as its shadow falls, to end or start a note with a quote. I hear many noises like winds to willow whispers perching a question atop <coughs> branch leaves. Did you understand who wrote? The windows are closed, even though tall blinds highlight a found seat, empty, empty of embers. Truly I have missed my love, old ways of ever slumber. Graft a roll call from hills so far of always. We showered ships with perfect weather as swirls of confidence shine through metered call to paint a portrait insistent upon using ochre 
as an umber, so fluid, graceful, as an outlawed voice, not so small. Forward, this is a theme of life and love. The cars move forward, inch to hair. People curse, moan, and yell, go. Start from a beginning, and it's a backward stare. Tuned up at the top of what? Usually a no. No, okay, I'm going to stop right there. No, no. That's a homonym. So no as used in understanding. At whom will feel satisfied and complete, but the only misguided misgiving is forgery towards the world's pain and discomfort, a set of empty leaves. So said a child who said, excuse me, but how? Do we change so insistently as to cover a basic quip like shall? While choices will make you guess when listening, now let us estimate rhymes through reason. For there is a turning point path worn as a shawl, wherefore our minds shed as honey to bees leaving. Inlet. This is a theme of death while using an iambic pentameter. I went walking today trying to find you, as tea leaves left as imprinted images pressed, and a strange behavior of corded blue around the stitch and fold of a dress, past trees, in and out of a forest, a story left cold, to hang atop a lake into a wonderful stream where time shone had slowed. They drew upon weary eyes who stretched to dream, insisting that I only dive in, however true nature let me sit, while an attempt of sins of the Father's sin as thoughts of thinking held eternal visits, an offering to lay as mortar, deep in cracks and grooves, let loose and created a scene that flowed as our drowning guest. So no, you won't find me hanging or anything like that, but <laughs> I just, I wanted to give you guys some examples that way you can choose. I mean, there's so many different themes that we have in our society. And these are just like three of them, you know? And I want to just offer you a wide range and get you going. Because I, I do admit that it's not always that easy to write. And so I mean, we don't do that every day, you know? Nobody's clamoring for a spot, or so to speak. Okay, now we're going to switch over and I'm going to read you some villanelles. This one is from Elizabeth Bishop, titled One Art. The art of losing isn't hard to master. So many things seem filled with the intent to be lost, that their loss is no disaster. Lose something every day, except the fluster of lost door keys, the hour badly spent. The art of losing isn't hard to master. Then practice losing farther, losing faster. Places and names and where it was you meant to travel, none of these will bring disaster. I lost my mother's watch, and look, my last, or next to last, of three loved houses went. The art of losing isn't hard to master. I lost two cities, lovely ones, and vaster. Some realms I own, two rivers, a continent. I missed them, but it wasn't a disaster. Even losing you, the joking voice, a gesture I love, I shan't have lie. It's evident the art of losing is not too hard to master, though it may look like, write it like disaster. And this one is probably the most famous Villanelle from Dylan Thomas. Do not go gentle into that good night. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men at their end know dark is right, because their words had fork no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last way by, crying how bright, their frail deeds might have danced in a green bay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men, who caught and sang the sun in flight, and learned too late, they grieved it on its way, do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death, who see with blinding sight, Blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on the sad height. Curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And I'll read you something from Petrarch. I find no peace and have no arms for war, and fear and hope and burn, and yet I freeze, and fly to heaven lying on earth's floor, and nothing hold in all the world I seize, 
My jailer opens not, nor locks the door, nor binds me to her, nor will lose my ties. Love kills me not, nor breaks the chains I wear, nor wants me living, nor will grant me ease. I have no tongue, and shout, eyeless, I see. I long to perish, and I beg for aid. I love another, and myself I hate. Weeping I laugh, I feed on misery. By death in life so equally dismayed. For you, my lady, am I in this state. He wrote this for a lady named Laura. And the term laurel leaves that you may have heard somewhere along the line, um, they're usually, po it's a poetic device. And a lot of poets used it in their writings, or they would put them on top of people's heads. Crowning them is a crown of, it's a symbol, it's very, very symbolic. So definitely, if you guys have a chance, be some more of his stuff. This is another sonnet from Shakespeare, Sonnet 129. The expense of spirit in a waste of shame is lust in action until action lust is perjured, murderous, bloody, full of blame. Savage, extreme, rude, cruel, not to trust, enjoyed no sooner but despised straight, past reason hunted and no sooner had, past reason hated and as a swallowed bait, on purpose laid to make the taker mad, mad in pursuit and in possession so, had having and in quest to have extreme, a bliss in proof and proved a very woe, before a joy proposed behind a dream, all this the world well knows, Yet none knows well to shun the heaven that leads men to this hell. We'll go over some of these. Okay. We'll start with Villain for an Anniversary. And it's by Seamus Amy. A spirit moved. John Harvard walked the yard. The atom lay and split, the west unworn. The books stood open and the gates unbarred. The maps dreamt on like moon dust. Nothing stirred. The future was a verb in hibernation. A spirit moved. John Harvard walked the yard. Before the classic style, before the clapboard, all through the small hours of an origin, the books stood open and the gate unbarred. Night passage of a migratory bird. Wing flap, gown flap, like a homing pigeon. A spirit moved, John Harvard walked the yard. Was that his soul? Look. Sped to its reward. By grace or works, a shooting star. An omen. The book stood open and the gate unbarred. Begin again where frost and test were hard. Find yourself or founder. Here, imagine, a spirit moves. John Harvard walks the yard. The books stand open and the gate unbarred. Now we're going to go to Sonnet 292 by Francesco Pichet. The eyes I spoke of once in words that burn, the arms and hands and feet and lovely face that took me from myself for such a space of time and marked me out from other men, the waving hair of unmixed gold that shone, the smile that flashed with the angelic rays that used to make this earth a paradise are now a little dust, all feeling gone. And yet I live, grief and disdain to me, left where the light I cherish never shows, in fragile bark on the tempestuous sea. Here, let my loving song come to a close, the vein of my accustomed art is dry, and this, my lyre, turned at last to tears. Okay. Next one. If I Could Tell You by W. H. Auden. Time will say nothing, but I told you so. Time only knows the price we have to pay. If I could tell you, I would let you know. If we should weep when clowns put on their show, if we should stumble when musicians play, time will say nothing, but I told you so. There are no fortunes to be told, although, because I love you more than I can say, if I could tell you, I would let you know. The winds must come from somewhere when they blow. There must be reasons why the leaves decay. Time will say nothing, but I told you so. Perhaps the roses really want to grow. The vision seriously intends to stay. If I could tell you, I would let you know. Suppose all the lions get up and go, and all the bricks and soldiers run away. Will time say nothing, but I told you so. If I could tell you, I would let you know. Now this next one, I don't know if, you, if any of you have read uh, Portrait as an Artist for the Young Man. 
Uh, no, and it's by James Joyce. He openly writes a villanelle for Stephen Daedalus, the character. So it it's very it makes it even stronger when you read it. it it's uh, if you get a chance, pick it up and just read it. You know, as it's an excellent novel. All right. Are you not weary of ardent ways, lure of the fallen seraphim? Tell no more of enchanted days. Your eyes have set man's heart of ways, and you have had your will of him. Are you not weary of ardent ways? Above the flame, the smoke of praise goes up from ocean rim to rim. Tell no more of enchanted days. Our broken cries and mournful lays rise in one Eucharistic hymn. Are you not weary of ardent ways? While sacrificing hands of grace, the chalice flowing to the brim, tell no more of enchanted days. And still you hold our longing gaze with languorous look and lavish limb. Are you not weary of ardent ways? Tell no more of enchanted days. Okay. Any questions? Any comments? Yeah, okay. All right. You guys ready to go <laughs> That's a funny question. Um, I will state though, look over everything that I've I've offered to you. We'll help you in chapter ten when you read over the sonnets and the villanelles. You guys will probably strengthen what if you don't have the material, like just with your fingertips. Because I don't expect anyone to that's what I'm gonna do to do is re research, you know. But um yeah. look at definitely look at drama because that's a stage that it was well intended for. The dialogue back and forth to entertain our mind as for a next scene. How do we get there? I mean, say, so like for instance, let's say uh, uh, I'm watching a movie and the movie shows the main scene where the conflict is rising from the love or something like that. And then it starts to go smooth, but then the conflict arises again. Is that what you mean by back and forth? Yeah, because you, you pay attention to these things. I mean, that's, that's a perfect example. It's a theme. There's a theme that we see and that we hear. And, and through all of these, I tried to give you good examples of themes all throughout. Well, from well-written lyrics, because the Dazed and Confused lyrics have been rewritten. I mean, if you go back, and, and I, w I will stress this, please, if anything, if, you know, do this on your own. And if you have to go to a computer, make it your last resort. You know, if you need to research, go to the library. But theme, yes, that's a very, very strong occurrence. And when I sat down to write these, I actually, I wanted to pick some really strong ones for you guys. So that you would have something to work with, to play off of. Not use as your own words, um, but something definitely to just go over. So, and because I will state that the usage of simile and metaphor, the five senses, the fixed forms, open form, closed form, um, lyric form that's interwoven, and it's just, it's, it, it's very impossible to get away. You hear this voice almost question the reason of the rhythm, falling, rising, falling, back and forth. And so you take that scene away and you have words, you have dialogue, you have script. So, and that, it does help understand any of this. Because these are, I, I had a, there was a student once that he stated, he goes, well that's like, you know, stalking. Well, it may have, it may appear that way, but these people saw someone. They fell in love with just that image. So if you put it to usage to a movie or a scene, you may fall in love with a certain movie. And you may say, well, that was a great movie. But that movie just, eh, I'm not ever watching that again. But that one person they may not have married, may not have had a relationship with, but when they wrote 
it was like a dialogue back and forth, back and forth. And it made their writing stronger all the more. So please go over, like if you got the, the email, go over your, the exercises you're supposed to. Uh, Billy Collins is speaking, so if you haven't picked up a ticket, please go. It is extra credit, and it's well worth it. So I call it Lorette, so. Can we not pick up a ticket there when we actually go, or just show our get in? I, you know, I don't know where the ticket sales are at. That's so nice. I would say if that's how you want to go about it, then go about it that way. Yes, ma'am. I looked online, I think, at how you get in free with the ID. Yeah, yeah. 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 Definitely. Is he going to be doing readings? You know, I'm not real sure exactly what he's doing, but I would go because not only for extra credit, but you can learn a lot from his writing style, his voice, his comedy, his, I mean, the, we live, uh, most people live for comedy. It just kind of breaks up the seriousness of the situation. But that too is a theme, and it's in plays. That's what grabs our attention. So, I'm going to let you guys go a little early, actually, so that you can go and enjoy the weekend and get started, since you have a lot to do. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. All right. So basically, we've already covered that if you have the email, thank you. Um, so just go ahead and do those assignments that you're supposed to do, and when they're due, please have them ready. Um, today we'll go over Sonnet and Villanelle. I know that's chapter 10, but with the rhythms, the meter, the dactyl, the anapest, the stresses, it's very important. So we're just going to cover it. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to go ahead and read to you. That way it'll just prepare you for writing your own sonnet or going on. Because I'm pretty sure a lot of you will want to write more. 14 lines may not be enough for you. 19 may be easier. So, and I can completely respect that. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll start with something that I've packed up for you that includes dactyl, anapest, trochee, voice. Voice is another extremely strong rhythm. And when you write your poem on a paper, that's what comes out. That's what we hear. That's what we feel. That's what we understand. And we either want more of it or less of it, depending upon who's your favorite writer, author, things of that nature. Just to be unbiased, which is a good thing. Okay. I'm going to read it to you with the stresses first, and then I'll reread. <clears throat> the car has hit the street. Another night that jazz fills up my drink. So easily, like neon light, wakes the infantry of desire in the ever, ever ending notes. Stationed outside to inside my ears as a front door open to all types of audible usage, which syncopates a rhythm. The car has hit the street. Another night that jazz fills up my drink. So easily light, neon light wakes the infantry of desire in the ever, ever ending notes. Stationed outside to inside my ears is a front door, open to all types of audible usage, which syncopates a rhythm. Did you guys hear the difference? What do you read? This is actually my own stuff oh, okay. that I wrote for you I was, guys. I was trying to figure out, I was like looking through this. Right yeah, now. no, no, no. I, I just, I wrote this out because I was like, there are so many ways to write dactyl, anapest, trochee, voice, rhythm, and meter. And I didn't want to bore you guys. So I wanted to just, you know, partially entertain the thought. So, and there's sentences. That's, a, that's all these are, are just basic, simple sentence structures. Constructed with thought and clarity. Um, also, simile and metaphor. We hear this a lot. I'm sure guys probably hear it more than females, or females use it more than guys that might use it. And like comes to mind. And as, like or as, like or as. You always see me getting a conversation with that. 
Well, metaphor we just use, it's natural for us. And um, it does, it's part of our senses, once again, that we use to understand our writing and understand other people's writings. The, sim- the, the symbols, the images, the usage of like or as and metaphor is very important, especially when you do write a sonnet or a villanelle, because you will hear it. You're not aware of it at first, but you listen for it, and then you can go, oh, okay, got it. Um, probably the most famous of dactyl, anapes, trochee, voice, is The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. So just, all I want you guys to do today is just listen. That's really all it's done like. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. And it's interesting because lyric, like when you read lyrics, song lyrics, there's those questions in there, whether they're in the chorus, whether they're in the refrain, the end of the song. So I wrote this for you guys, and I actually wrote it for a friend, but it's a, it's, I'm going to use it as an example. For song lyrics, you left my side for my wife. Affections from you turned my night sick. Just how? You and she left me dead and blue. Jody, Jody, oh, I wanted to know. Just how could you? Your line, gotta remember this one for sure. Brother, you're my best friend. Jody, Jody, oh, I wanted to know. Just how could you? As this story ends, I've left you. She, well, always was no good. Not this time. Just leftovers from a rusted out tackle box fishing line. Jody, Jody, oh, I wanted to know, just how could you? And even the usage of the word, the name Jody, it kind of goes either way. It's like, you can use it as a male symbol, or even anything, a female symbol. So it kind of goes both ways, and it works. But to me, what I've always picked up on from sonnets and villanelles is they're structured with lyric all throughout. So you do hear questions. And you do hear a repetitive recurrence of rhythms. A, B, A, B, A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B. Which is important because you do go back to that being a closed form or an open form. And being a stress or unstressed syllable back and forth. And it helps as far as writing, rhyming, scheme, meter. Um, Also, has anyone ever been in theater or been to a play? Okay, so you understand that dialogue in itself is forms of poetry. And it goes back and forth. So I'm going to read you every man. And now, I do understand we don't live in the dark ages, so it may there may be some words. I'm not saying go back to archaic usage of language, but it is important to understand. A play written by Anonymous. Alack, shall we thus depart indeed? Lady, help, without any more comfort. Lo, fellowship forsaketh me in my most need. For help in this world, whither shall resort? Fellowship here before with me would Mary make, and now little sorrow for me doth he take. It is said in prosperity men friends may find, which in adversity be full and kind. Now whither for succor shall I flee? since that fellowship hath forsaken me. To my kinsmen I will truly, praying them to help me in my necessity. I believe that they will do so, for kind will creep where it may not go. I will go say, for yonder I see them. Where be ye now, my friends and kinsmen? So just to hear that go back and forth, back and forth, it's important, because that's how many plays were created just from a sonnet for a villanelle, and then they went from there. They created another character, so on and so forth, with scenes to back the dialogue. Okay, now we're going to go into sonnets, actually. And I'm going to start with George Meredith, Lucifer and Starlight. On a starred night, Prince Lucifer uprose, 
tired of his dark dominion, swung the fiend. Above the rolling ball and cloud, part screen, where sinners hug their specter of repose, poor prey to his hot fit of pride were those. And now upon his western wing he leaned. Now his huge bulk o'er Afric sands careened. Now the black planet shadowed Arctic snows, soaring through wider zones that pricked his scars with memory of the old revolt from awe. He reached the middle height and at the stars, which are the brain of heaven, he looked and sank. Around the ancient track marched rank on rank, the army of an alterable law. Now we'll go to Shakespeare, Sonnet 29. When in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state, and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries, and look upon myself and curse my fate, wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope, with what I most enjoy contented least, yet in these thoughts myself almost despising, happily I think on thee and then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising, from sullen earth sings hymns at heaven's gate, for thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings, that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Any questions, comments? Anything? You can, I mean, feel free. Okay. This is Sonnet 129 by William Shakespeare. The expense of spirit in a waste of shame is lust in action until action lust is perjured, murderous, bloody, full of blame. Savage, extreme, rude, cruel, not to trust, enjoyed no sooner but despised straight, past reason hunted, and no sooner had, past reason hated as a swallowed bait, on purpose laid to make the taker mad, mad in pursuit and in possession so, had having and in quest to have, extreme, a bliss in proof, and proved a very woe, before a joy proposed, behind a dream, all this the world well knows, yet none knows well to shun the heaven that leads men to this hell. Now we'll go to Francesco Petrarch, and he wrote sonnets and villanelles. And if you guys have a chance, look up his background, it's really interesting, it's how his voice came to be and how it became so strong and well known. I find no peace and have no arms for war, and fear and hope and burn, and yet I freeze and fly to heaven lying on earth's floor, and nothing hold in all the world I seize. My jailer opens not, nor locks the door, nor binds me to her, nor, nor will lose my ties. Love kills me not, nor breaks the chains I wear, nor wants me living, nor will grant me ease. I have no tongue, and shout, eyeless I see. I long to perish, and I beg for aid. I love another, and myself I hate. Weeping I laugh, I feed on misery. By death and laugh so equally dismayed. For you, my lady, am I in this state. And most of the sonnets that we do read, and villanelles also, are very important. Um, because now we distinguish <coughs> later in life that <coughs> it seems is, is a very stalking method as I've heard before, to write certain sonnets or villanelles. But to understand it, in the days that Shakespeare was alive, Ben Jonson, playwrights, and Petrarch, they felt enamored with one person. <coughs> they had not married this person, but that was their sole intent, was to write about this person. And they put them on a pedestal as such that some people, when they ran into this female, or whomever, or whatever, because most of these have themes like war, death, love, life, laughter, um, comedies, tragedies, but they would kind of think about things they've heard about this one person, and it, was, it would just amaze them. They had no idea.